Daniel from the Soul Company, and we have another guest with us today. We have Joseph. Hello, Hello Joseph. So Joseph is joining us today uh, because he actually came with us to this brewery. But yeah. uh, we would like to know a bit more about you, Joseph. Tell us a bit about yourself. I used to work in the building right next door, so it was. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah, we, I used to work for uh, TBS uh, for four years. All right, well, today we have a very delicious brew to mm. be tasting today. Uh, and it's kind of exciting for the three of us because recently we went on a brewery fact-finding mission. A pilgrimage, around. one might say. It was a pilgrimage. <laughs> and this happened to be our first stop of it a very mean. arduous uh, and lengthy for Doha, our driver. Oh, man, uh, I drove like... Uh, we got lost. <laughs> <laughs> Navigation, yeah. not our fault, but a little our fault. But we did have lots of plenty of delicious booze to go with it. Lots of plenty. Lots of plenty. Mm. I knew you were going to pick up on that. <laughs> uh, but tell us a little bit more, Dan, if you will. Chong Myung Ju, this okay. is our first stop. So this, as Julie says, was the first stop in our journey. Uh, and we were not that far from Seoul. We took about an hour to get just south of the city uh, to the town of Chongju, which is exactly the same spelling and pronunciation as the clear alcohol that we're going to drink, Cheongju, but it is not the name of the brew. The brew is called Cheongmyeongju, um, and it is a pretty newly on our radar uh, Cheongju in the markets, but it has been around for a little while, mm -hmm. um, but it is popping up in a lot of bars that are kind of more upmarket, would you say? I would say that. Yeah. And I think that's probably why it hasn't been on our radar yeah. because this is definitely in a more uh, expensive price yeah. range. And because of that, it doesn't tend to show up on a lot of bars, uh, menus and lists. And mm -hmm. it can be a bit more difficult to try. Absolutely. So this is brewed in Cheongju and the brewery itself actually has a really fantastic visitor center where they do like brewing experiences. They can do tastings of this kind of alcohol. Um, which is really exciting. Anywhere where there's a tasting, you'll find us there. Um, but their brewing facilities are fairly large. They're mm -hmm. pretty like mid-size uh, brewing establishment. And this is basically an Yangju, which is a two-step fermentation. Uh, from what we hear, they use rice porridge uh, mm -hmm. to get the, 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 the starter going. And then they add more... Uh, Chapsal Kodobap, the steamed chapsal in the secondary stage. Mm -hmm. So it takes about 100 days to ferment, and then they age it for three months, I believe I was what so, he yeah. said. Yeah. Um, so that's quite exciting. Anything that takes a long time to ferment uh, is generally of a pretty good quality because it means it's been made in low temperature, the recipe is a little bit more complex, um, and it really allows a lot of those kind of more subtle flavors to come through in a brew. So I'm very excited to drink this again. I am also very excited. Uh, Joseph, what did you think of the brewery when you visited? Um, it was really nice, especially the uh, the owners. They were really um, welcoming. Mm -hmm. They actually wanted us to stay for dinner. But oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> but the coolest thing when I went to the brewery was when we went to the second floor, and mm -hmm. it was the first time that I actually saw how they made the nuruk, and it was like a perfect circle-y, uh, kind yeah, of like yeah. a vitamin C tablet <laughs> kind of thing. But the whole place is great. It's situated in a nice hanoki kind of setting. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's their home too, so it's, it's very comforting. It's mm. got a nice welcoming feel. And actually, they have a really cool business because the sister uh, is also into pottery. And so next door the, to the brewery, you can uh, paint your own cups mm. or you know do some kind of ceramic work uh, that can go with your makgeolli. We should totally do a tour there, Julia, right? <gasps> really? <laughs> yeah, that would be fantastic. Don't what a great think? idea. Funny you should say that. We are actually uh, we're, in there. We're going to do that. Gonna do yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, because this is such a great experience to, to see uh, some really well-made traditional alcohol, but also go home with some cups Absolutely. Uh, when you're done. So and watch this space. One of my favorite things about this brew um, is that it is quite strong. Um, mm. It's 17% alcohol, which is leaps and bounds stronger than a lot of what you find on the market, uh, especially if you're used to drinking makgeolli, which is less than 10% usually. Um, this is a strong Chengju at 17, which puts it a few percentage points ahead of a lot of even Chengjus mm -hmm. uh, on the market too, mm -hmm. which is groovy. It is groovy. <laughs> it's actually definitely one of the highest uh, yeah. highest ones out there. And that probably also does raise the price a little bit, mm. uh, but you know, it's, it's worth it. So 
shall we? Actually, while I'm opening, Jen, do you want to explain a little bit about the label? Because this can be pretty confusing. You ah. might think you've seen this label before. Mm. So this label is not particularly only belonging to this brew in this brewery. Um, there's actually what we could call like a godfather of Korean alcohol, uh, Pak Rok Dam. And he has... Flames in the water. You <laughs> know! <laughs> Flames in the water, you've heard! <laughs> Flames in the water, yeah. So the word Seoul in Korea, uh, where we get our company name from, actually means uh, Korean alcohol. But the etymology of that is in uh, this kind of the inherent fire that exists within fermentation in the water. Um, but Pak Rok Dam, this godfather of brewing, thank you, Julian. You're welcome. He has his own restaurant in Seoul, but he also sells not only his brews, but he sells breweries from uh, brews from breweries that he has kind of had a hand in helping or that he promotes uh, because he sees them as worthy of, of patronage. Um, but you'll find that if you go to his particular store, you will find all of the labels are the same. So this is the patented special Pakrok Dam approved Flames in the Water. It's kind of it's kind of like you know uh, I don't know like in your respective countries but if you have like the uh, we have one for beef Australian beef it has been FDA approved or or whatever Scotch beef right yeah. Scotch beef <laughs> Scotch beef I was just Scotch haggis or whatever you else Miles bars or something I don't know sorry no uh, it's kind of that concept where it's his stamp where he says this is the best absolutely we all got Mars bars you <laughs> deep fry them I know you do I just yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, with that, cheers. I need to drink. <laughs> cheers. cheers. It's really yellow. It's very yellow. It's almost a green tinge, mm. actually. It's like a very uh, watery green tea, almost. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely see that. The aroma is, um, it's complex. <laughs> <laughs> Usually have to taste first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Those are the first three words that come to your head about the aroma. And you've already tasted it. Tasted. So let's just combine that with the taste. Three words. No. <laughs> oh, three words. Um, aroma, aroma wise, or taste? Oh, you've done it all now. Oh. Just, just give us the heads up. <laughs> uh, Ooh. It's definitely one of those chung juice that you want to drink after you finish your meal, not before you started. Mm. Oh, sorry, three words. <laughs> Elegant. Mm. Uh, simple. Mm. And, uh, soothing. Ah. Ah. Nice. <laughs> not fair. I like that <laughs> Elegant, simple, and soothing. Yeah. See, right. I would have probably just been worse than that. I mean, <laughs> good, nice. Better. Best. Wet. <laughs> uh, it's actually quite, you know, sometimes you get a bottle and you think, oh, is that how uh, the quality normally is? Mm. Is it past its date? Was it kept in good, good refrigeration? Mm -hmm. This is actually in very good condition, I would say. Yeah, and off the bat, when, as soon as you taste it, like the alcohol really kind of yeah. floats up to the top. You the can, burn is there. It's definitely there. But it's the burn you can feel in the mouth. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. an esophageal burn, which some of the brews tend to mm -hmm. uh, burn all the way down. But there's so much going on. There's so much sweetness and uh, tangy, tart balance that it actually harmonizes with the alcohol. So yeah. it's really high, but you don't go, oh, it's so strong. You know, mm -hmm. it's quite nice. It's there's, there's some. Now that I taste it again, I can feel some. Her herbalness? I don't know mm. if that's a... I think you mean herbalness. Herbalness. Yeah. Herby. It's herby. <laughs> herby. <laughs> if you could put a, a, a pinpoint on the herb, what would you say? Oh. Oh, you got me there. My vocabulary is not as refined as yours when it comes to... I don't know. To simple, reading. elegant, and soothing. That was pretty good. Um... It's just great. <laughs> I'll go back to dummy myself. It's definitely, it's definitely like a citric kind of quality to it. I, mm -hmm. I kind of want to say like a, like a lemongrass or something or like lemon pepper. Very lemon pepper. I'd say it's more. It is a very citrusy tang. But what's interesting is that the flavor is very much in the front palate. Mm. There's not a lot happening uh, in in sort of the back tannins. So the after flavor, uh, the aftertaste. It's very aromatic here. Yeah, uh, I, f I feel like there's like a warm ghost just inhabiting my mouth. It's just like, it's just, wow. right? No? 
Seventeen <laughs> percent, everyone. Yeah. This is what happens. A warm ghost inhabiting my mouth. You know. <laughs> this is seventeen percent. This is yes. seventeen. Whoa. You don't we remember? Just said Alpha? That. <laughs> like three minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> we have actually. Uh, we had a couple of bottles of these after the first night. Oh, we did, Perhaps yeah. we don't remember oh, that yes, either. We did, yes. There you go. Yes. Um, what I meant by warm ghost. Tell us about the warm ghost. Was like you're. I don't feel like there is like a, a, a flavor. So it's kind mm. of like I know I've obviously drank something, but it's kind mm. of like the alcohol and the body of the brew kind of like linger. Like mm -hmm. it sticks around for a long time, but it's, there's not like any bitterness. There's no acidity no. that kind of remains. So it's just kind of like. But it definitely still has that round, flavorful mm. aroma, and that's you know we talk about Tongdu. Uh, generally, in the pantheon of Korean alcohol, Tongdu does have more uh, aromatics. Yeah. It's much more floral, more fruity, uh, and that's the purpose of the brew. It should mm. have a more stronger, more beautiful aroma. So, if I was to buy this, mm -hmm. how much would a bottle set me back, Julia? Oh, geez, how many pennies can you count? Uh, it is pricey. Yeah. I will say it's pricey. I've seen it for fifty thousand. Uh, it is in in those kind of realms because mm. it is rare. Yeah. Ah, one thing we didn't mention, the brewery is planning on releasing a takju. So what is really mm. interesting about this brew is that uh, normally it doesn't have a takju. Normally most breweries have a takju and a tongju and sometimes a soju. But this brewery traded on tongju alone for many years. But he's actually developing now a takju. Mm. So it's going to be a more uh, slightly less expensive version of, mm. of the brew, which you'll be able to see more often. But I think the Chongju will remain in the 50s, 60,000 ones at yeah. most of your high end uh, places. Make sure you take your girlfriend. Take your <laughs> <laughs> it's a girlfriend brew. Yeah. Or your father in law, mm. if you like it. <laughs> <laughs> or your boss, who, or your might, who might pay for it for you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like that one. Yes, yes. <laughs> or just come to the soul company, we'll probably find a bottle for you. Yeah. Don't say that. They're not expected. That would be popular. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think this is a win on our, on our I, list. Absolutely, yeah. I would I would drink this any day of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, well, today. Let's, your cup is almost drained, but let's go. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Thank you. Thank you.